Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome to The Curious Expedition. Apparently this game has been on Steam and Early Access for like a year and a half and somehow I never heard of it. Uh, but this is like right up my alley. I did a little run uh, prior to this just to get familiar with the way the game works. I unlocked a couple of new explorers, so we're going to choose a character here. We have the choice of Charles Darwin, uh, who is a butterfly enthusiast. He gains sanity each time we collect a butterfly. Richard Francis Burton, who can rest in native villages with outstanding costs and increases gain sanity from resting in those villages. And you can see he starts with some, everybody starts with some crew members and some equipment. Shotgun. Well, that puts Darwin pretty high in the running, I think. Uh, Marie Curie, this is who I used on my run. Uh, this dog is awesome. Hunting dogs are great. So she gets five perks instead of three. Uh, every time you complete an expedition, you get a perk, a choice of three perks. So she just gets more choices. Mary Kingsley, she's a pacifist, reduced aggro chance, but can't use weapons. And she has some uh, a translator and a native warrior to come with her. Nikola Tesla, who I unlocked by blowing up a mountain. That was pretty fun. He has increased maximum sanity, a cook, a trader, and a free donkey, and also a Tesla gun. Like, a, like an electric gun? Okay, we're probably doing that. That's probably what's happening. Uh, jungle Explorer, reduced movement costs. He starts with some guys. We're gonna... Ooh, a hunting rifle is a pretty good weapon, I think. Alright, we're just gonna move through this quickly, because none of this stuff means anything to you. But uh, it's, it's all going to in a moment. Welcome back to the Explorers Club, dear friend. Have you heard that we are building a statue to honor our most famous member? Word is that you have a good chance of seeing your likeness on that statue. However, I'm afraid to tell you, you are not the only kid. You and your rivals have six expeditions to prove who is the most famous explorer within our club. Alright, so if you're here, you're watching this on my channel, uh, you're probably aware of the game Renowned Explorers, and that this is the same plot that that game has. And they share a kind of broad thematic similarity in that they're both about explorers going on expeditions, and was Harriet Tubman on a lot of expeditions? It seems, okay. Uh, we're going to pick Expedition Difficulty, because it's hard. Uh, it's a hard game. Uh, but I want to say that that's pretty much where the similarities to Renowned Explorers end. Obviously, the game has a very different graphical style, but in, the, in addition, there's a very different tone. The mechanics are totally different. Um, yeah, I think there, there's not actually as much crossover as you might think. That said, the things that draw me to Renowned Explorers also draw me to this game. So we're going into the Deadly Jungle. We only have one choice, so that's where we're going. Full of anticipation, I made my way to the docks. The captain had yet to arrive, so I skimmed some stones on the water. Sister Emelina approached me during preparations. She had plans to visit abroad, and requested that we accompany her to a nearby native village upon our arrival at our destination in order to spread the word of God. Alright, uh, so we have to escort this missionary, sure. I accepted, since I would gladly do my part. Uh, I rejoiced as the ship was ready to head to distant shores. So this game, um, one of the big thematic differences between this game and Renowned Explorers is Renowned Explorers is very lighthearted. This game is a lot less lighthearted and it's a lot less like hooray colonialism. There are some there's some serious costs to being the people, being the person that we are. Alright, after weeks of nasty food and seasickness, we finally reached the shore of our expedition area. The land lay open in front of us like an invitation to an adventure. I recommend we proceed to claim loot from sacred temples. Okay, maybe you know it's not that different. <laughs> Uh, so we can store ship in the ship. We can store stuff in the ship. We have not done so, so there's nothing to take. Uh, we're gonna refill our water. I don't know what this does. I have not yet had to use water. I sure like water. Who doesn't like water? Sister Emelina had indicated the location of the village she desired to reach on our map. Yeah, I don't know what it does, but it's free to take water, and you can just throw it out if you don't like it. So whatever. Okay, let's have a look at our party real quick. Let's talk about some mechanics. So first of all, we have a compass. Somewhere on this continent, there is a golden pyramid. I don't know why it's always a golden pyramid, but it is. Every place you go, there's a golden pyramid. Our job is to find the golden pyramid. That's how we That's how we get famous. We have a compass up here that indicates the direction of the golden pyramid. On the first, uh, the first continent, it's pretty accurate. Later on, it will be less accurate. In fact, like around the fourth expedition, I believe last time, when I arrived, the compass was swinging wildly over like a 270 degree arc. And it gets more accurate as you reveal more tiles. So exploring is uh, is the way you find your thing. 
Uh, we have a day counter down here. Travel uh, costs. Travel increases the number of days. We have other explorers who are trying to become famous as well, right? The longer we take, the more likely it is that they will find their golden pyramids first. There is a significant bonus for being the first one to find the thing, and then, uh, you know, a less significant bonus for being second, and a smaller bonus for being third. So we're going to try to find our golden pyramid quickly, but we want to balance that against making sure we take the time to find treasure. All right, uh, we have crew. Nikola Tesla, the inventor, he has dice. So what this what this is trying to say, each row is a die, it's a six-sided die, and it's showing you all six faces. So Tesla actually has uh, just two blue support dice. These are not good dice, but um, we'll talk about the dice a little bit more when we get into combat. He also has two carrying capacity. The number of inventory slots we get down here at the bottom is just, uh, we, we obtain that number by adding up the capacity values of all of our party. Uh, so he's a, he has a strong mind, he has increased sanity, that's true, 100 is the normal base sanity, and then we have this mission. Well, we have a cook. The cook can cook stuff. If you have a cook in your party and you find raw meat, and by find raw meat, of course, I mean kill an animal, uh, he can make it into actual edible food. If you do not have a cook in your party, you have no idea how to use fire to turn meat into food. Uh, and he is a sexist. Okay. I don't know what that means in game terms yet. I'm sure it's a bummer. And he has a green die that has these faces on it. Again, we'll talk about the dice when we get to it. Um... Our Parsi Trader is a fighter. He has a nice attack die. These sword faces are important. Uh, he can decrease prices while bartering, and he is superstitious. And Sister Emelina, who is temporarily with us, is uh, she gives us more maximum sanity and allows us to rest for free in missions. Uh, it doesn't mean during a mission. It means at a mission, like the religious structure. <laughs> and then we have Donkey. Donkey has three capacity. And also, uh, it doesn't show it for some reason, but um, the donkey has a brown die that has some attack faces on it. He's, the donkey is surprisingly good in combat. We also have up here the sanity meter. Sanity decreases as we adventure. Sometimes we'll have random events involving our crew. If our sanity is high, those events are more likely to be positive. If our sanity gets all the way down to the bottom, some pretty gnarly stuff can start to happen, so we want to avoid that at all costs. And we have standing. This represents how well we are liked by the tribes in this land. It will reset every time we go to a new place, because, you know, there's no internet or anything. The tribes can't tell each other about us. Um, if we let it get too low, they will act with hostility towards you, it says here. I, I was attacked on site during one expedition. I had a tribe of guys hunting me. It gets bad. It's, it's pretty important to keep this high. Uh, so, you, you lose sanity by traveling. Every time you can see here, it says 10 next to my cursor. That's telling me it will cost 10 sanity to move to here. Uh, we don't have like explicitly supplies we don't have to feed ourselves we're not going to starve to death but uh eating is the main way to re uh, replenish your sanity if you don't eat your sanity gets low and then bad stuff starts to happen and you will eventually die um due to bad stuff happening if we move adjacent to one of these question marks we can enter the stone circle and let's see what we got uh, we came across a stone formation that seemed to be man-made there were inscriptions etched into the earth rock perhaps they formed some sort of map Dabadi Tata seemed visibly upset at the idea of desecrating the spiritual site and warned us about disturbing the gods. We're not going to disturb anybody. Let's just uh, reveal some ruins, shall we? Uh, he doesn't He doesn't like it when we mess with the native stuff, I guess. Uh, he made sure to voice his concerns to me. I was not sure how long it would take for him to come to terms with my decision. So if you do stuff your crew members don't like, uh, bad things will happen eventually. They'll leave, or worse, they might sabotage the crew. You know, there's a lot of stuff that can happen. Uh, so we just got an expedition point, an exploration point. As you interact with weird stuff and unveil tiles, you get exploration XP. When you have an exploration point, that is when this star is filled up all the way, you can use it to level up your people. So I don't know... We're dropping off Sister Emelina, right? She's not actually part of the party, so let's not spend the thing on her. He's getting mouthy and might leave. I think we'll spend this on the cook. So the cook has gained a level of culinary finesse. He'll gain even more if he keeps leveling up. Uh, you can see he's now a level 1 star, so it will take 2 points to level him up again. As you level people up, they gain skills and HP and sometimes capacity, and I saw somebody gain a die during my last game. Uh, so travel through forests is a bummer, but there's a cave or something over here. There's something in this mountain. As you can see, it costs us... It doesn't actually cost us extra days for the most part. 
but it does cost us extra sanity to move through the hills. Or to move through the forest, rather. We located a cave. Its opening seemed to lead deep into the mountain. We require a torch in order to venture forth safely. For some reason, we didn't bring a torch. Um, but we can try to roll our personal dice and come up with an eye. And if we come up with an eye, then, we, uh, then we'll be okay. So we did not. We rolled our cruise dice and did not find an eye. Uh, so we, we came in here and we're going to get lost, I think. I didn't, this didn't happen to me last time, so I don't know what's going to occur. Who needed that? Uh, who needed that which mankind had enjoyed since the Stone Age anyway? We stumbled forth into the darkness. At first I thought we would make it, but then I perceived a tripping sound, followed by someone crying in pain. Eventually our eyesight adjusted to the darkness. I saw that Dadabi, uh, Dadabhai Tata was bleeding. His injury was grim, but he was unable to express what exactly had happened. I found a small cavern strewn with the remains of what seemed to be a failed expedition. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this place either, actually. The skeletal remains of what must have been a German explorer presented us with a crooked smile. All the bones we found had been cracked open and, it seemed, sucked empty of marrow. How do we know he's a German explorer? There are no, there are no flags or anything. I can see the camp right now. Whatever. Investigate. Let's steal all this stuff. Ooh. Okay, so first of all, he had ropes. Oh, we're taking everything. What am I doing? So he had some ropes, which are cool. He had some machetes, which are cool. And he had these tome pages. These are basically like spells that we can cast. Of homebound. I don't actually know what this does. And this is of fertile lands. I assume this makes... So these are like actual hardcore magic. Like they can level the terrain around you and stuff. There's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of wacky things that can happen. So I assume this is going to like make trees grow or something like that. Totally possible. Oh, our guy is injured. He has zero toughness, which means he can't participate in combat. And he has an injury. Anytime somebody takes damage, they gain this. And uh, it may just heal over time. You can heal it immediately by using medical supplies on them. And uh, as long as they're wounded and traipsing around, they can get infected. So you can see we, can, we will expend some of these um, machetes to make the wooded areas take less sanity to cross. Just hack through the, uh, the hexes. Okay, this does not go where I was hoping we would go. Alright, well, I guess we have to come back up here. Travel has a base cost in addition to a cost per tile. You may have noticed. Um, it says 5 plus 2, 5 plus 3, 5 plus 4, 5 plus 5. Yeah, so uh, setting out at all costs five. So it's not in, it's not to your benefit to make lots of small, cautious moves. You need to make the biggest moves possible to use your sanity in the most effective way. Okay, a village. What's our standing right now? Zero? Okay. We encountered a tribe that appeared to be the best scouts known to this region. The villagers observed us with curiosity as our trek arrived at their settlement. We moved freely about the village and considered our options with these people. The natives observed us with curiosity. They were kind and offered to help our cause. So, this is the place where we were supposed to deliver this missionary. We received two standing. We accompanied the missionary to the village chief, who was a compulsive talker who told us about the preeminent landmarks to set eyes on in his region, including a holy shrine which he marked on our map. That's nice of him. We felt more than welcome, and the villagers were seemingly excited about our presence. Okay, I like that. Um, we are going to trade... So, okay, they have a treasure. Anything that has this little ribbon icon on it is a treasure that can be used to gain fame, and fame is victory points. Now, you can see down on the bottom right, it says value, 10 minus 50%. It means these guys are considering this item to be half as valuable as it really is. Um, different people have different valuations for things. We are definitely going to try to get that from them. Um, we can trade them some garbage. Raw meat. We don't actually have a lot of uh, food. So we should probably try to get some food from them. And these berries, maybe. Alright, what can we trade them that they would actually valuable value? They don't consider the tome pages to be particularly valuable. They like fireworks a lot. Hell yeah. I don't actually care about fireworks. And then, like, we can get a coca leaf from them as well? Oh, we could haggle. Right, we have a... We have a traitor in our party. I don't know why you have to drag the haggle thing down, why it doesn't just assume that you want to use haggling. I'm sure there's a good reason. Haggling maybe reduces our um, standing faster or something. Anyway, I'm pretty happy about this trade. Okay, 
Uh, let's try to recruit. Let's see if anybody wants to come with us. I asked around to see if any adventurous spirits were enterprising enough to seek fame and glory. Soon enough, I had uh, gathered the interested individuals and had to decide on a new recruit. Remember, we lost our missionary, so we have an open slot in our uh, in our trek. It says four or five. We get Ruhubo the Scout. What's his deal? He gives us more information about the region and has increased view distance. That's pretty cool. Uh, a water buffalo or a donkey. You know what? I had a water buffalo on my first run, and it was super useful. We're going to take the water buffalo. We named him Sir Davis. Davis? Davis. I'm going to say Davis. Our time with the natives was a delight. They remained friendly and offered us more help. We're going to rest in their village now. When you rest in their um, village, they your standing goes down, but you gain some uh, some sanity from getting to rest. Uh, as darkness fell, the natives lit a campfire and invited us to sit with them. The village chief offered to prepare a feast to celebrate our visit. However, we would need to hand over one of our animals so it could be prepared as food. Let's not please with the let's not do that. The chief was a bit disappointed, and the rest of the evening went by without any particular incident or extravagance. And we gained 30 sanity. We lost two standing. Uh, you always lose standing when you rest with the villagers. I guess they think you're a freeloader? Alright, they remain courteous and open to further questions. Let's get out of here before we make anybody unhappy with us. Alright, so we gained a water buffalo. Water buffalo has crazy high capacity. Also, a water buffalo can be ridden. When you ride the water buffalo, it reduces the capacity by two, but it reduces the sanity of travel as well. The sanity cost of travel. Uh, we're also going to just go ahead and... Uh oh Oh, man. We made tea from the cocoa leaves to gain some sanity. Uh, it, it's not having that effect on everybody. Dadabai Tata could not shake the feeling that the walls were closing in on him. Take it easy, man. Okay, so he's become claustrophobic. Uh, we're also going to eat these berries, I guess. There's no reason really not to. And then I don't... Can I cook this? Yes, he has made burnt animal meat, which gives us five whole sanity. Okay. That's cool. I didn't have a cook in my last adventure. I just couldn't cook the meat at all, so I don't actually I didn't actually know how good the stuff was gonna be. So you can see up here we have an enemy. This is a hyena or a group of hyenas, and the red area around it represents its uh its aggro radius. So if we just avoid that area, then we shouldn't have to worry about it. Let's examine this shrine. A temple, long forgotten by mankind, stood bathed in light before us. It was a bold testament to the power of its creators. The portal that led inside emitted an eerie chill. A thick layer of sand seemed to surround the structure. I don't know what this... If this is in red, it probably means something, but I, mechanically I have no idea. We found a sacred altar room. If this place held any riches, I knew we'd find them here. Our steps echoed as we approached the sacred altar. Let us fill our pockets, says the chef. And a metal cube. Huh. So this is a treasure, right? The golden llama. I don't know what this is. It doesn't have the treasure um, ribbon, which means that it probably has a use of some kind, but I can't imagine what. Covered in otherworldly engravings. Well, we're taking it, obviously. What a glorious day. This was exactly what we came for. We took whatever we could and proceeded outside as the whole area behind us began to wither and die. A drastic climate shift ravaged this region, and we were responsible. So yeah, a lot of these uh, temples and shrines and stuff are cursed. And when you steal the holy objects, you activate the curse. Uh, so I guess we've screwed this region up pretty good. We probably don't want to be right by it while that's happening. Um, up and to the right is what our compass is indicating. So let's try going this way. Oh, something's happening. Oh, God. Oh, okay, so look, it, uses, it has the water icon on it, so I guess you need water to cross desert safely. Well, I'm glad I brought the water. Uh-oh. Mosquitoes. I've not stepped into mosquito territory yet. I don't know 100% what happens. I mean, we can guess, right? I have an idea. I think we're going to go ahead and use the whiskey. Regain a little bit of sanity. Stuff is very powerful. Uh, he has become alcoholic. Great. We'll lose loyalty if not continuously supplied with alcohol. Well, he'll appreciate this. 
And he's also become an alcoholic. Okay. Everybody in the party is so vulnerable to alcoholism all the time. I don't want to touch it. It's in mosquito territory. Uh, so let's go over here. And by doing so, we will collect this neat butterfly. And that's the golden pyramid right there. When we get that, we can leave. So I want to go up here first. Because there's a thing we haven't investigated yet. We should obviously investigate it. Oh, and we got a we got a point. I'm not gonna spend a point on our trader because I think he actually might be getting fired. He's accumulating a lot of negative traits really quickly. Oh, good, another cave. We gotta buy some torches, man. Okay, we got we got some eyes this time. I instructed everyone to form a line and prepare for the darkness. I lost all sense of time and space as we descended into the cave. Faith, and perhaps a little luck, guided our steps safely through the blackness. I could not tell you how long we labored in the gloom, but eventually we saw a light and endeavored to reach the source. We arrived at a small cavern strewn with the debris of what seemed to be a failed expedition. What little remained was rotten. All the bones we found had been cracked open, and it seemed sucked empty of marrow. Yeah, let's not stay here for a real long time. Well, they still have some equipment. A totem stick. When rammed into the ground, nobody seems to dare come in closer, so I guess this allows us to ward off hostiles. This is climbing gear. This is really useful. And chocolate rations are also quite useful. Let's take all of that stuff. <clears throat> and then I guess we're running low on sanity. We don't have a lot of supplies left. Let's just book it for the temple. We'll run out of sanity, but it's not, um, the bar going empty doesn't automatically make, make something bad happen immediately. I think we're going to carry all this stuff through to the next, uh, expedition. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to cross a hex or two with zeroed out sanity. Oh god, man, that happened quickly. I had already withdrawn myself when I was awoken by a loud gunshot. I immediately ran to aid Dadabi done by Tata against an attack, but to my horror I found him dead on the ground, killed through my own gun. A tragic accident? I vowed that he would take his place in history. Okay. Well, that went awry quickly, and we lost some carrying capacity. It really damages your sanity to, carry while, uh, to travel while overburdened, but fortunately we don't have to travel anymore. So, day 69, you can see none of our competitors have reached their pyramid yet, so... The Pyramid of Gold was our goal, but for the clearing, but for the claiming. We had overcome all events to, to achieve success. Over, after such an endeavor, tremendous relief overcame me. I knew that the name Nikola Tesla would not be forgotten. Quite the contrary. One day I would be played in a movie by David Bowie, which is the greatest level of fame that one can achieve. Alright, so you see, we started with 10 fame, we got 100 for finding the pyramid, and 200 for being the first one to do it. The speed bonus is really large. Very, very significant. And then uh, they throw a little party. And they're like, look at that trusty donkey. And apparently the chef thought they were talking about him, and he viewed it as a compliment. So at the end of each expedition, we get to choose a perk from a random selection of perks. Increased radius of dynamite explosions. Receive an extra support die. Or start each expedition with a standing bonus. I think I'm going to take the standing bonus. Dynamite didn't come up all that often in my previous play. And I think being being in a better position with the local tribes will, uh, will be helpful. It'll at least make it easier for us to find a place to rest for free. Uh, so it looks like we, we narrowly won on fame there. And then we get to take all of the treasures that we found and either... Um, gift them to a museum in exchange for fame, which again is just victory points, or sell them at auction for funds, and we use funds to buy gear for the next expedition. So um, I think we're going to gift these butterflies. We, we found that one new kind of butterfly, remember? So let's uh, gift that butterfly collection. Uh, this only gives 5 fame, but 30 funds, so we're going to sell that for sure. And then this is 50-40. Um, 60 funds feels pretty low to me, so I think we're going to sell this. I would have loved to claim more victory points, but the fact is we need supplies, man. Alright, so this time we have a choice. We can go to the Deadly Drylands, a harsh and desolate area for experienced explorers. Uh, and it has 
icons indicating the kinds of things you can find there. Or a harsh and desolate area for experienced explorers. It's different. It's different. The unseen drylands or the deadly drylands. Well, this one has more icons on it, so let's go here. Eagerly anticipating the forthcoming adventure, I arrived at the docks. The crew had preparations left to do, so I imagined what laid beyond the horizon. A finely dressed fellow appeared on the docks while I twiddled my thumbs. He challenged me to complete my forthcoming expedition within 80 days and offered a reward upon completion. I accept your challenge, sir. I shook my hand as I accepted his challenge. He tipped his hat and wished us luck on the journey. I was delighted to witness tales of my previous expeditions had attracted quite some attention. Many new recruits showed up, willing to accompany my expedition into the unknown. Who do I want to recruit? So we can uh, recruit this guy, Tim Timster, and Luis. It doesn't say who Luis is, but I got this guy in my last uh, run. Luis is his dog. And dogs are actually pretty good fighters. It's nice to have a dog around, especially since it looks like this counts as one slot in our party. Uh, or we could recruit Jack Connell, the soldier, another whiskey expert, quote-unquote expert. Or James Sterling, the diplomat. I think we're taking uh, we're taking this guy. So his camera ability increases the gained fame for each expedition. He's a journalist. His blue die is not very helpful in combat, and we already have a lot of blue dice, but the dog that he brings with him has the ability to actually bite people. Scouting dog. We could use the help of the dynamic duo and welcome them to the team. Just in time, the ship was prepared to set sail, so let's purchase some equipment. Um, animal improvement allows you to gain more inventory slots by improving the carry capacity of your animals, but I think we have to purchase equipment first. So this is a campsite. I don't know what this does. Oh, uh, that's a gun. Oh, we have a gun already. We're fine. One of these days, we're going to get into some combat, and I'll actually be able to show you guys what the guns do. Um, so I want to buy supplies, but the whiskey seems to have an awfully high rate of turning people into alcoholics. Unfortunately, we don't have anything else to eat available, and all we're taking with us is two chocolate rations. I think we do have to do this deal. All right, let's set sail. So it looks like we're going out with a full expedition, or a full uh, inventory. But keep in mind, we can expand our inventory by dismounting from the water buffalo and allowing it to carry stuff in, in the slots it was using to carry us. Uh, so I know that, I know because I can read uh, on the Explorer's screen that you can unlock a new character by completing this challenge. So I think we're, we're going to try really hard for that. After an unexpectedly calm voyage, we reached the land of our imminent adventure. I knew this place had held something special for us. Let's refill the water. Um, and then let's just, yeah, let's just get out there. Maybe I should, actually, maybe we should stow some of this stuff. I don't really know what that does. I don't want to mess with it yet. Um, we probably won't need the totem stick. Let's, let's throw those in the hold. I have no idea what this is. Let's get a move on. So, we have one expedition exploration point. We may as well spend it on him right away, because it's going to increase the fame gained from our expeditions even more. Oh, and it improved his die. He got, he got rid of the blank faces on his die. That's nice. Look at this. Free dog. Look at that dog's sweet biting dice. I don't know. I, I don't know if there's a way to improve the dog. Maybe he eventually improves if you, if you keep leveling up Tim Timster. Hard to say. All right, so we found a trader. A roaming merchant caravan had pitched up camp here. The colorfully dressed trader had a lot of valuable goods on offer. A collection of lost and founds. All right, let's see what you got, buddy. So he has some treasure maps. We do have shovels. He has a shrine pendulum, which reacts when close to a shrine. A treasure pendulum engraved with a small sunflower and the initials TT. If that's a reference to something, I don't know what it is. Mini puppets, small puppets that can take away fears before going to sleep. That's cute. Alright, I want a treasure map. Let's try to get a treasure map. Uh, I will sell you this thing I don't know what it does, or maybe two dynamite. How about that? Alright. K 
King's bounty mapping skills don't fail me, well, that's obviously right here. All right, we found that plenty, uh, plenty quickly. Dig with a shovel. After many exhaustive hours and a broken shovel, our excavation proved to be successful. We found two voodoo dolls. That is not the best value ever. A doll that brings bad luck upon your rival. So I, we can use this to screw up other people's expeditions. We're probably just going to use it as trade fodder, honestly. So you can see our compass is swinging over a pretty large area right now. It's basically just telling us don't go back to the ocean. But as we continue to reveal tiles, it will become more and more useful. So let's move as far as we can to avoid uh, eating too much sanity loss. Tigers are not a joke. Tigers will mess you up. I'll let's go hit this real quick. Stone circles. We came across a stone formation that was obviously man-made. There were inscriptions painted upon each rock. Perhaps they formed a kind of map. I think we would like to reveal settlements, given that we have, you know, four standing and everything. All right, and we have one expedition point, which sadly we cannot spend. Because we, uh, everybody in our party would take two to level up. The cook's loyalty decreased because we haven't given him any whiskey in a little while. Here. Feeling better? Uh, boy, I sure hope there's a way through here. Uh, we found a thing over there. Okay. If there had not been an obvious path through the mountains, we actually could have formed one ourselves by just dynamiting a mountain out of the way. Alright, what do we got here? Some kind of sweet shrine. All manner of plant life grew towards the sun. A circle of dried blood had been drawn around the whole structure as a warning for anybody that dared enter. The surface about the structure felt hot to the touch. It was still possible to walk there, but the potential source of this heat was disconcerting. It's true, I do find that disconcerting. Also, if we go into that shrine and we take stuff, the locals are going to not be pleased with us. Um, let's leave this undisturbed for now. We'll come back. We're going to go to the village first. We're also going to check out what this is. It's a hut. We entered a strange-looking hut. The place smelled of old, dank wood with all types of dried herbs and other peculiar things hanging from the walls. A native shaman approached us with a wild-eyed stare as he chewed on some leaves. Yeah, you want to trade, maybe? Okay, so he doesn't have a tome page of abomination. Boy, I have no idea what that does. Hill creation, on the other hand, seems very straightforward. I don't think I want any of these. Uh, how would you feel about this garbage map that I already used? Nah, I don't think we want to trade with this guy at all. He doesn't have anything I'm interested in. He did have another one of those weird metal boxes, though. That was worth noting. Alright, we're at day 40. Today we reached a village. Its inhabitants were apparently in reverence of the spirit world. The air was filled with a delicious scent. The villagers kindly beckoned us over and offered some of their freshly cooked food. Wow. Yeah. Free meat. That's awfully nice. We seem to be quite popular here. Uh, let us trade with them while we're popular. <laughs> while we're still popular before they figure out, you know, what kind of people we are. Um, honestly, I think I'm just going to trade with them. So if you give them a deal that's tremendously in their favor, they'll, you'll start to gain standing. Um, I think we're going to take some torches because it's a really good idea to have torches and some mangoes. I don't really care about gaining standing with them. Our standing is positive enough. Can we get a mango? No. That's fine. We'll take that deal. So we get a thing that is treasure for us that is not very valuable to them, clearly. Alright. Um, and then we should rest if they'll let us. We unpacked our belongings and prepared to spend the night, the night at the, uh, with the natives at their campfire. I told stories of my travels so far. A young warrior asked me if my world was superior to their village. Hmm. I bet if I say local life is superior... Well, there's, there's a chance that if I say local life is superior, we'll gain standing, but there's also a chance that they'll call me on bullshitting and we'll lose standing, right? It's hard to know what's going to happen. Um, let's, let's try it, though. Let's see if they'll buy it. Yep. I told them I preferred a close proximity with nature and that I admired their way of life. They were visibly happy with the answer. Cool. Alright, so we gained 30... 
uh, sanity. You lose some standing when you wrestle them, that's fine. We're going to leave, and then we are overstocked here, but we can eat. Alright. Um, and then I can just drop the water as well. <laughs> I doubt we're going to need it. Alright, so now let's hit that shrine up. It looks like we want to go south for our uh, <coughs> pyramid. So we're going to go into the shrine this time. We found a sacred altar room. If this place held any riches, I knew they would be here. And indeed, a golden plate and a golden vase. We're going to take it. We're going to lose some standing. I don't know how they know instantly, man. This was not a day for hesitation. The treasure was ours for, this, for the taking. Oh, hey, no curse. Cool. All right, so we're going to do this, and then we need to drop one more inventory slot of stuff, or else we will be sad. Uh, this is a little harder. I think we want to keep the torches and everything that gives us sanity. I'm kind of thinking that this is not that great. My suspicion is it teleports us back to the ship. But remember, we don't actually have to get back to the ship to leave. Yeah, I'm going to toss this. It's possible that that actually... Oh, we have one more slot. You know what? Alright, we're just going to dismount. It's going to up the sanity cost for travel very slightly, but... Um, it's looking like it might be important. Uh, we might not be able to avoid combat here. Um, so it's over here somewhere? Day 51. I think we're going to end up fighting this, uh, this panther. I'm not too worried about it. Oh, they got the drop on us, so I get to explain combat now. Ow! Alright, it's just one panther. So we have a number of dice contributed by our party members, right? Uh, Tesla himself puts in two blue dice, Chef puts in a green, Dog puts in a brown, um, the guy, the journalist, puts in a blue, and then we've got a uh, die over here that represents our gun. So we roll all of our dice, uh, and you can see the vibrating dice could do something. So like, we can take this, this is claws, the dog uses his claws to deal some damage. I'm not going to play these yet, and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, these dice don't really do a lot by themselves, but you can play them in combinations. This does the lookout move, which would shield us for two. I'm pretty sure that the gun does more damage in combination with some of these blue dice, so I want to try to... Come on. Alright, we got a gun face. So quick discharge, two damage to the panther, one to us. Uh, okay, alternating beam. Seven damage to the panther, one damage to us. That's a lot better. It's a good combo. Okay, unfortunately we didn't quite take the panther down. We have to let him have another turn. Uh, he rolls lots of damage and injures everybody. Yep. And now we just have to find one damage. Which unfortunately means rolling a... There we go. That's not... Yeah, it's not really any different. Okay. We deprived the dead of anything useful. What he's trying to say is we loot them. Take off. Alright, um, so let's have our cook cook this meat and then we'll eat the meat. And then we are overburdened still. Uh, these things aren't hugely valuable. Yeah, we could like drop the teeth. Or we could drop the ropes or the climbing gear. I think the climbing gear is more likely to be useful. I'm a big fan of taking home as much loot as possible. So we're at day 54. I think we're going to get this. Oh, and we found it. That's it right there. Alright, I say we just get out of here. Because I want to unlock a new character. Also, we're all injured and we don't have medical supplies. And the longer we stay out here with injuries in the jungle, the more likely that stuff is to get infected, I think. The exotic landscape complemented the extraordinary golden pyramid. We had overcome all events to achieve success. After such an endeavor, euphoria overcame me. I knew that the name Nikola Tesla would be written about long after I departed this life. And obviously we, we got there, we got through that pretty quickly, so I'm sure we'll get the uh, first to finish bonus. This golden pyramid, worth a little bit more. This speed bonus, worth uh, the same amount. And our journalist throws in an extra 32. Not bad. 
Oh, give me six bucks. That's true. You do wish you were me. You have no idea how much. Alright, so what are our choices here? We could increase compass accuracy gained when uncovering fields. I don't think we want to do this because I think in general we want to take our time in the expeditions. Uh, we can get redu reduced movement costs in deserts, which obviously would uh, strongly incentivize us to pick deserts. Or gain two additional inventory slots. Well, I don't really think we can argue with the utility of that. Alright, we are actually tearing it up. This, the last game was not going nearly this well, although we do not have a lot of money. So let's sell some stuff. This gives 70 fame. No, let's sell everything. We really need funding. Okay, we're at 672. We have a comfortable lead. I think we can afford to uh, go for some resources here. Uh, so I think that's going to be it for this episode of The Curious Expedition. If you guys are enjoying it, please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, you know, do stuff that people do on YouTube. Uh, let me know, because obviously your feedback is going to play a big part in determining how much of this game we play on the channel. Alright, that's it. Come back next time, tomorrow, the continuing adventures of Nikola Tesla. Maybe we'll be a little bit luckier than Marie Curie was and we won't get eaten by velociraptors. We'll see you then.